Welcome to Golden Mastermind Seminars Radio with your host, Jeffrey Combs. Breathe, release, and let go. Good afternoon, everyone. Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. On a 2 4 Tuesday, breathe, release, and let go. Topic for today's Facebook Live is healthy boundaries. How do I establish healthy boundaries? Well, you establish them by st- establish them. You establish them by being clear on what it means to be in recovery of codependency, what it means to let go of being an over-obligator, an enabler, a caretaker, a people pleaser. You let go of this tendencies to do more for other people than you do for yourself and then feel disappointed and resentful. This is breakthrough content. If you're able to receive this content today and then put it into application, free of guilt, you will begin to improve who and what you attract so that you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings. And you'll be in a place where you can breathe, release, and let go, and you'll be free of the guilt that keeps you from being your best self. You'll be free of the guilt that you hold on to about being able to succeed in a business, succeed in a relationship, succeed in your terms and your time frame as you practice the skills of letting go. This is a separation between the feelings and the events that shape them. What we tend to get caught up in is we get, tend to get caught up in families and careers and jobs, and then we tend to be people pleasers or we have codependent tendencies where we over-obligate ourselves. And we put ourselves in a position that we don't want to do it, but we do it because we don't want to do it, but we feel obligated to do it. And we're doing it out of guilt. And then we end up resenting ourselves or resenting the situation. This is a very deep topic that only a few people ever break through on. And if you are one of the law of the few, then you will be in recovery. I am in recovery of codependency. I did not realize how codependent I was in my intimate personal relationships until I began addressing it in 2009. I began to realize how much of a rescuer, an enabler, an over-obligator I was in my personal intimate relationships, and I began addressing that specifically with the book Codependent No More. I also read the book Adult Child of Alcoholics. I began attending some of the meetings reading the literature, and especially studying the content that Melody Beatty wrote on codependency. And I began to change my boundaries. A healthy boundary means that you're able to establish a precedent and you're able to establish this boundary and you're able to live with it specifically free of guilt. And you begin letting go of what other people are going to think or how other people are going to feel. So if you decide that you do not want to attend a wedding, but then you decide that you should attend the wedding, then you go to the wedding knowing you shouldn't have gone to the wedding because you went out of guilt because you're worried about how someone else would react or respond to you, then you've just given up that healthy boundary. If you determine that it's not in my best interest to attend this function, to attend this event, to attend this wedding, to attend this funeral, to... If you tell one of your friends or one of your coworkers that you're not able to pick them up or take them somewhere because you have other duties and obligations, but yet you try and squeeze it in, you try and force it in at the last minute, and you try and pull it off on the rest of your life, and then you end up getting exhausted because of this, well, that's what happens in codependency. So in codependent recovery, it begins with you establishing that you are the most important person in your life and you can do that free of guilt. And as you're able to step into the power of that, you're letting go of your people-pleasing tendencies, your tendency to over-obligate yourself, and your tendency to do more for others than you do for yourself and you don't get any recognition, gratitude, or thanks from it and you're doing it out of duty and obligation. Now, this is not a black and white situation. It's for you to determine what a healthy boundary is. It's for you to determine, do you give your power away to narcissists? Do you, give your power, do you have people that are narcissistic in your family, in your circle of influence, 
that you allow to traumatize you and then you feel guilty about the relationship and resentful about the relationship. This is what healthy boundaries mean. And if you've ever been married to a narcissist or dated one or had a boss that had these tendencies or an upline or a sideline or a crossline or any multitude of situations, and if you feel intimidated and then you cave or give in to these situations, then that's going to be a direct reflection of your low self-esteem. Codependency is also anchored when we are children, we end up giving up our innocence and we become grown-ups in certain situations. If you're an adult child of an alcoholic or adult child of alcoholics, or if you're an adult child of a narcissistic parents, grandparents, brother, sister, the birth order you fell into, multitude of situations can have this effect on you where you become a people pleaser, a giver, and a server, and that becomes your role in life. And you're giving your power away, taking care of others from a context that is disempowering to you. Now, once again, this isn't black or white. You can still be a caretaker. You can still, be, you can still give people a hand up. But are you constantly giving them a handout? And this is where you start to distinguish the difference between being a people person versus a people pleaser. And as you start to create that boundary, that's the fine line. That's the razor's edge that Dr. David Hawkins talks about in the book, Letting Go. He also covers it. He, he fillets it in the book, The Map of Consciousness Explained, Chapter 7. And Chapter 7 covers the barriers to transcending higher consciousness. And being in codependent relationships is one of those situations. If you're building a culture and a team, and that you are, you're the, your team is based on you, and you create a team that's mentor-dependent, or leader dependent that's going to stifle the growth of that organization because you want to be able to create a team that's independent or a culture that's independent. If you own a business, you want to be able to have employees that you have trained and it's, they're very clear on their role and you're not over obligating yourself on their job. You're not doing their job for them because you don't believe that they can do it perfectly. And that means that you've created this situation. If you if you move addicts into your home because you feel guilty or you don't want to put them out on the street or you continue to let these people rob you of your energy, that's going to be on you. You have to understand what your obligation, your moral duty, what's your moral code. Once again, this isn't black and white, but I just see this so many times that oftentimes in families, I will see someone move the perpetrator, the original perpetrator, back in their house because the person's at rock bottom and then the situation gets recreated over and over to fulfill a feeling. I've seen people visit their relatives, even though they've been traumatized by their relatives, and they go back for that second dose, that next cup of trauma, that next instant gratification of not being good enough, which creates the payoff. It's going to be your responsibility to develop clearly defined boundaries with how you live your life. And the objective would be to live free of guilt and to f live free of the feelings of being selfish. How many of you grew up with someone who put that selfish burden on you? They would call you selfish, all you think about yourself. Now there may be ca cases like me where I, would, I was that person at times. I was in my ego, my arrogance, my low self-esteem, where I put myself first all the time and didn't think of others. But as you become a leader, a leader grower, you can't do it for everyone. You have to have clearly defined boundaries. And I can't let everyone just send me messages all day long of my clients and answer all their questions. I have very clear boundaries about that. And this is what you learn to do yourself, is that you establish very clear boundaries in codependent recovery. As a child, if you had to become the superstar child, you became the therapist to your mother, you became the caretaker, you became the doctor, the, you became the naturopath, the homeopath, 
You had to go to the store and get the liquor. You had to buy the groceries. You went to the liquor store and you bought the cigarettes or you got dragged to the tavern. You got dragged to the bar and you were told to sit there and do not say a word. I mean, these are very unhealthy boundaries that you grow up in. If you're an adult child of an alcoholic, adult child of a narcissist, then you're going to have some of these lingering feelings left over of not being good enough. And then if you were put in a role, if your father said, it's your responsibility to take care of your mother, or if your mother said, it's your responsibility to pick up after your father, or it's your responsibility to take care of your father. Did you ever go to the liquor store for one of your parents on a fake ID and buy them cigarettes or buy them alcohol? Or do any of these situations? I mean, did you ever have to clean up after an alcoholic parent or any of these situations? This is how we lose our innocence. Did you become that superstar child in the family over obligating yourself, taking care of your parents? Did you feel responsible for your parents? Did you give your parents money? Did you work a job? Did you babysit? Did you give your money to your parents to help out the family? Well, Unfortunately, what that does is it creates a dialogue with money that's not conducive to the creation of it. It creates feelings of guilt, but sometimes feelings of shame. I've seen people sabotage themselves in direct sales business, network marketing businesses, insurance businesses, real estate businesses, and other businesses, and hold themselves back so that their loved ones don't feel less than. They don't want to show up their family. And if that's the case, all you're doing is holding yourself back. It's time for you to let go if this is you, to let go, breathe, release, and let go so that you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings. If you just came on and you're just beginning to watch the content today, the topic for the, for the, the, the Zoom Live or the Facebook Live today is healthy boundaries. So on the syllabus right here is codependent recovery. I started reading the book Codependent No More in 2009. I'd been around, I'd been in the 12 step program since 1988, but never really understood the depth of my own codependency. I was able to separate my codependency from business, but most of my intimate relationships were disasters because I would be the superstar, I would be the over obligator, I would do too much, I was the rescuer, I was the rescuer of weak people, and I would prop them up and do too much for them. So you, you want to be able to establish your own situation in cause and effect and why you do what you do. I was the first of two childs. My parents were very young when I was born. I became very skilled at managing a household, running a household, cleaning the household, vacuuming the household, filling the cars, driving the cars with without a driver's license. I became a superstar farmer for my grandfather. I worked in his construction business. I worked in the neighbor's construction business. When I was 11, 12, and 13 years old, I became very independent while being codependent. I became independent, but I would also give my money away to try and buy friends because of my own low self-esteem. So you, you determine your own events that shape your feelings and begin your codependent recovery Today, I also highly recommend that you read David Hawkins' books, all of them, but specifically the book Letting Go, Power Versus Force, Healing and Recovery, and his groundbreaking book, The Map of Consciousness Explained. It will give you great insight on how to let go of the feelings that shape your payoff. The payoff meaning we recreate the same situation to fulfill the same set of feelings. The objective is to be able to be in the recovery and you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings. Bob Campbell, thank you for being here this afternoon. Bob says, grateful for your vital lesson. This is so important in setting boundaries. Once again, if you're an adult child of alcoholics, adult child of narcissists, there's a high probability that you became a superstar child and you became an over-obligator and then you end up doing too much for others and you're, you'll have people-pleasing tendencies while being a top-tier producer. You can be highly productive, and then you're in the all the time. You're taking care of people all the time. You're producing all the time. And then you don't have any time for yourself because you're worried about what you should be doing. And you're not, you just can't, you, this is how you over-obligate yourself. And that level of over-obligation then creates the overwhelmed feelings. And then that also brings on feelings of guilt and or shame and then there's also the resentment factor because you do too much for people, then you don't get recognized for your service or your value. 
And this is why so many people have challenges establishing a price point for themselves as an influencer, affluencer in a coaching business. And then they attract people who can't afford the services that they could themselves don't feel comfortable with. It becomes the yin and the yang that will keep you feeling resentful. This is why it's so important to develop healthy boundaries. And it's so very important to be able to understand the cause that creates the effect of why you do what you do. And then you're practicing the mechanism, the skill set of letting go, the separation of the feelings and the events that shape them. I've been a coach for 26 years. I started coaching when there weren't that many coaches back in 1998. I've coached 15,000 clients, 15,000 hours one-on-one. -on -one. I've had as much as a 12-week waiting list for my coaching. I've spoken in four continents, 47 states, over 1,000 keynotes, and I've lived, breathed, personal development, self-improvement, recovery, higher consciousness, quantum physics, mind-body connections, homeopathy, naturopathic remedies. I've been, I've been a healer and assisting people how to let go and let God, how to surrender your lower self to your higher self, God, how to let go of the events that shape your feelings, that keep you in this low self-esteem that keeps you experiencing the payoff. It's so important that you begin to step into your power today. That would be now. You separate your feelings from the events that shape them, and you seek peace, not pleasure. The ego, which is the lower self that lives in doubt, wants instant gratification. The ego wants pleasure. And the more that you understand that pain becomes pleasure in the, in the situations that you recreate to fulfill the payoff, so you keep experiencing experience, and then you live in the brain fog of this doesn't make sense, I don't understand this, when you begin to let go of the events that shape your feelings, as you begin to create the separation, the emotional separation between the facts and the events, when you can accept the situation for what it is, when you can accept where you are right here today. That's right, Joseph. Seek peace, not pleasure. When you seek, because pleasure is the instant gratification that the ego wants. The ego wants that instant hit, that shot of dopamine, that shot of adrenaline, that shot of vodka, the shot of scotch. The, it wants pornography. It wants a, dif a dysfunctional relationship. It wants recognition. It wants rewards. When you can let go of that, and you seek peace, not pleasure, then you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings. And when you graduate into this state of consciousness, there are no relapses because you reach the place where the pleasure isn't worth the pain. My name is Jeffrey Combs, president and founder of Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. I want to thank all of you for being here this afternoon. If you have not experienced a free 20-minute coaching session, and you have considered coaching one-on-one -on -one with me, please send me a friend request and a Facebook message, or you can go to my website, goldenmastermind.com, and you can request and fill out a 20-minute survey, and I will get back to you immediately. I want to say hello to Joseph, Bob, Vanessa. Vanessa, good to see you this afternoon. Nicole, good to see you. Stacy, Denise, a lot of new people I've never seen. Vicki, Steph, good to see you. Aaron, always good to see you. Kayla, my new client, good to see you. Wendy, so good to see you, Wendy. Honored to have been your coach so many years ago. John Lippelman, good to see you. Scott Lucas, always good. David Harris, Lisa, Lisa, client a long time ago. Sarah, good to see you. Good to see all of you. And Ruby, thank you for being here first on today's Facebook Live. This is one of two, two for Tuesdays. I'll be back here today. It's late on the East Coast. It's it's 12 a.m. East Coast, 9 p.m. Pacific, 2 for Tuesday. You have a great afternoon.